Hello folks, I'm coming from the vibrant city of Bangalore, India. Welcome to the first of the Bangalore Tales. In the late 18th century, European powers vied for control over the Indian subcontinent. In the Kingdom of Mysore in southern India, Muslim rulers Haider Ali and his son Tipu Sultan led a formidable opposition against the British East India Company, which became known as the Anglo-Mysore Wars. These wars spanned over 30 years from 1767 to 1799. In this video, we delve into the story of Colonel William Bailey, a chronicle of ambition, warfare and the ultimate sacrifice. Born in 1739 on a small estate near Inverness, Scotland, Bailey was educated at King's College Aberdeen and Edinburgh University. His father was a minor Scottish laird and his family lived off modest estate rentals. William knew that he would have to seek his income and fortune elsewhere. He joined the brand new 89th Highland Regiment of Foot, raised by the Duchess of Gordon. The regiment was ordered out to Madras, a dangerous deployment. The average life expectancy of a newcomer to India in those days was two years. Aged 21, William arrived in India towards the end of 1760. Sadly, he would never return to Scotland. His first battle was a significant one. He served as a lieutenant in the siege and capitulation of Pondicherry, the capital of French India. William saw action, but his precise role is not known. Platoons as we know them today did not yet exist. William is likely to have served as a subordinate officer reporting to a company commander. He would remain with the regiment for five years, until in 1765 it was recalled home. In that time, William had himself been promoted to company commander with the rank of captain, but not benefited much, if at all, from prize money, which would have enabled him to help finance the Danaina estate at home. Instead, he decided to take up a position at the Madras Army of the Honourable East India Company, where, at the age of 25, he was appointed command of a Sepoy battalion consisting of around 800 men, named after him for many years, the Baili Kipaltan. He fought in all the campaigns and battles in the 1760s and 1770s against the French, Haider Ali and his son Tipu Sultan, the Tiger of Mysore, who was supported and reinforced by the French. William Bailey emerged victorious from all these battles and as a result earned a high military reputation and was promoted to brigade commander in charge of almost 4,000 men. While William never married, he did have an Indian companion who bore him multiple children. At least one young daughter was sent to England in 1775. She'd never see her father again. In July of 1780, Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan raised a huge army, reinforced as usual by the French, invaded the Carnatic and even reached Madras. At that time, William Bailey and his brigade were stationed far to the north in Guntor Sirkar. William Bailey was ordered to march south to Conjavera, a town about 50 miles west of Madras, to join the main Madras army under the command of Hector Monroe to resupply. Hector Monroe was appointed at the last minute after Lord Macleod of Cromarty of the 73rd Highland Regiment of Foot, the senior King's Army officer in the region, had refused the commission apparently not wanting to get dragged into the Mysore Wars against Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan, whose artillery included newly developed explosive anti-personnel rockets. Colonel William Bailey's brigade column had to embark on the cross-country march through enemy territory to the main army at Madras for supplies, during which 
they were exposed to repeated flanking attacks of elements of the Mysore army. With the benefit of hindsight, Hector's order to have Bailey's smaller force march unprotected to meet the main force at Fort St. George and Conjeverum is considered a significant military blunder. On the fourth day of Bailey's march, only a few miles removed from the well-entrenched main force at Conjeverum and more or less completely out of ammunition, Colonel William Bailey and his brigade came under attack by the whole of the Mysore army. While Hector Monroe got organized and prepared to launch to reinforce them, William's brigade caught the full onslaught of Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan, was surrounded and suffered severe casualties. He was on the receiving end of the first effective use of rocket artillery and had himself run completely out of ammunition. When Hector Monroe's artillery reinforcements moved closer, they came under attack. Hector is said to have fled back to the defensive positions at Conjeveram on horseback, leaving the soldiers under his command behind without orders. Colonel William Bailey formed a defensive square on a high patch of land, leading a last stand of Bailey's brigade, which numbered 3,820 at the start, only just over 200 were left alive. Among them, only 16 of his originally 86 British and some European officers. Abandoned by Hector's reinforcements, he was forced to surrender. Upon his surrender to Hyder Ali, he is recorded to have said, This defeat is the result of a disaster of our own making. It was the worst loss the East India Company had suffered on the subcontinent. It is worth recording that during a subsequent battle at Polinor the following year, Sir Hector Monroe, already demoted following the disaster at Madras, was relieved of command entirely by his then commander-in-chief, Sir Ari Poot, when he was spotted sitting under a tree, again having left his soldiers without orders. It is easy to judge 225 years later, but we should remember that it would be over 20 years before the first Royal Military College was founded to offer structured selection and training of British Army officers, which was to become the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. Hector Munro had simply purchased his commission and was to learn leadership on the job, landed with an unpopular command which had been rejected by others. William Bailey was imprisoned in a dungeon at Seringapatam, the capital of Hyder Ali's Sultanate. It is hard to know exactly what happened to the officers. Mostly British men, and including Captains Baird and Rune, Colonel Braithwaite, Sampson, Fraser and Lindsay. One source describes, There Bailey and his fellow officers were chained to the stone holes stripped naked and subject to inhuman barbarity, regularly immersed in water up to their necks and denied medical help. So, if you have punishment, it is underwater for punishment, it's still here. The water will be there, it will tie here. This is the whole here. So it will tie here. Come to here. Because of this, fill the water, no? The water will come to here. That was 80, 80. 80 what do you need to know? On the 13th of November 1782, Bailey died in his dungeon. The guides told us that bodies of the officers were thrown into the Kaveri River. Tipu Sultan would regularly come down to the dungeon to view the prisoners. Tipu was killed by the British many years later in 1799. In a valiant last stand, Tipu died defending his home at Serengapatam. His father Haider had already passed away from natural causes by then. He was found buried under bodies of fellow soldiers, clasping his bloodied sword in death. It is not for us living in another time from the comfort of our homes to judge men like William Bailey 
or Tipu Sultan. All sources point to the fact that both were fearsome and highly competent warriors and commanders who gave their lives in dangerous, violent times in the service of their countries. While we don't have complete records of what happened to William Bailey's offspring, it is certain that the young daughter who left for England in 1775 would return to India as a young woman, marry an English surgeon and bear several children. It is known that other members of the Bailey extended family would also travel to live in India, creating a little Bailey diaspora. That was the first military history video. I had a great time putting it together, but it also proved one heck of a job. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think and consider liking and subscribing. See you in the hills.